Steve, if I may call you Steve. Um, yes. Let's begin by situating you in your childhood. I'm going to pick an arbitrary year. You're 10. Uh, where are you uh, at that point? Yeah, it, well, b before age 10, I lived in uh, Amherst, New York, which is uh, near Buffalo, New mm -hmm. York. And actually, it was when uh, I, I was 10 years old, my father decided that he wanted to um, move to the country. And when you because were he was brought up, he had spent, no, I wasn't brought up on a farm, but he had spent a week on a farm. Huh. Um, and he remembered it uh, a lot. Uh -huh. So the whole family, um, um, my parents and, and my brothers, um, moved to Clarence, New York, which is just 20 miles from Buffalo, okay. and bought a 68-acre farm, oh. which had a, a great big barn uh -huh. and a hayloft and various buildings uh, and... Uh, outbuildings, and uh, there was a nice uh, woods at the back of the property. Sort of a classic American childhood that most people really didn't have. That's, that's right. That's sort of the dream childhood. That's uh, right. But my father was a chemist, and he still uh, worked for Lindy Air Products, and he still had a long drive to work in, in Buffalo every day, but he but did it, was, it every weekday. And but he did it for his family. And, uh, and himself. And himself. It, that was his choice. And uh, my, by the way, my mother was also brought up on a farm, oh. and she was a little less enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was not as romantic an idea for her. That's right. <laughs> and she probably bore the burden of the work of yes. keeping it going. That, that's right, yeah. Well, we, um, as far as the, um, the crops, growing crops, mm. we rented mm. that. So they uh, the rental rental farmers actually brought up the most of the crops right right and and they had cows there were heifers there right too but she had probably a fairly large house to deal with and and so forth but, yes uh, yes we um you you said that your father was a chemist so you're you've anticipated a question i would have quite naturally is where did the interest in science come in the family um was he he was a chemist, but was he actively engaged as a father and in interesting his children in chemistry and science? Well, I think we were we're all somewhat interested in in science, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily chemistry, but yeah, but uh, science. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, that that's true. I early on in my childhood, he would talk about. Uh, how, how electric outlets and how they work and th things like that. He would. I mean, he uh, would explain things. He would explain things. That's, that's right. Uh, I guess my real mentor, though, uh -huh. was somebody else. Um, the inventor of the implantable uh, pacemaker, and, uh, Wilson Great Batch. Uh -huh. And uh, he became quite famous. He... Um, he won the fir first United States uh, um, invention. Uh, he got a uh, he got the prize of the invention of the year really? for this implantable pacemaker. He he lived also in Clarence, but in the Clarence town, not on a farm. He lived a couple miles away. How did you come to know him? How did we come to know him? Well. Um, one thing, we went to the Presbyterian Church mm -hmm. uh, in Clarence, every, and, and he was also there. In fact, um, he was my Sunday school teacher really? initially. Really? <laughs> yes, he, and he had been, he was a veteran of, of World War II, so he had, uh, he had stories about that that, that right. mixed in. Right. Um, he he brought you nevertheless into his intellectual life as well as his spiritual life. That is correct. Um, that 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 is true. So when he was inventing this implantable uh, pacemaker, 
he used transistors, of course, they were very yeah. new in yes. the 50s. Uh, yes. And they were replacing vacuum tubes. You can't put a vacuum tube in your chest for. Right. Um, so he realized this, and he was very interested in transistor circuits. He's an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so somehow um, I got a, a summer job working in his attic, he, in, in the garage. That's where he did. Mm. And he would, um, on a piece of cardboard, he would draw a circuit uh, with uh, transistors and capacitors and resistors right. and wires. And then my job was to take the actual transistors and everything, put them on the card and solder them together. Mm -hmm. And then he would take his oscilloscope and turn it on and you'd see And uh, so that's how it happened. <laughs> and you're you're intrigued. I mean, yes. you're, you're doing the job, but you're also clearly interested in yes, it. Yes, I, I, I thought that was quite in. And then I got a summer job later on working in the, uh, one of the factories he was working on. So yes, I, I was quite taken. I decided, I guess, uh, I wanted to be an electrical engineer. Yeah, yeah. So. We can conclude, uh, this is really a question, that it was really outside of school that the mentoring that sent you on your way happened. Yes, uh, that's, I did well in school, too. Yeah. I, I, um, we had regents exams. New York yes. State had regents Famously. exams, and I did especially well in mathematics. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so I was somewhat interested in mathematics. But when it came time to choose a university, yes. first of all, <laughs> Please. yes, well, my parents had, had met at University of Michigan, mm -hmm. so that was the natural place to go. Right. And uh, so I enrolled. Uh, my brother had also, older brother had, had done it. And uh, I, as, I took, uh, as an engineer, the School of Engineering. So you you were already not set in your ways, but set on your path. Yes. Uh, you you expected to be an engineer. You had had an early experience of it and liked liked it. Uh, I suppose in Michigan you probably didn't have to actually declare a major for a couple of years. Well. Um, so the engineering school was different from the arts and science okay. school. So I was in the engineering school. I did take, I started out taking a, a calculus course and I did well. The, uh, the professor was Kazarinov. He was a Russian mm -hmm. guy. And actually uh, he, he and I actually did extracurricular work and he was impressed with that, mm -hmm. so mathematics was creeping in mm -hmm. there. I stayed in the engineering program for two and a half years, and then I applied to go to arts and science and major in math. Okay, that's a clearly an important point in your life. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask something that is so obvious, but um, maybe, maybe there's an interesting um, answer to be had. In what did you think was going to be the difference in a switch from the life of an engineer who clearly had ability in that to a, a life in mathematics? Well, I guess I knew uh, um, mathematicians mostly do more uh, pen and paper work mm -hmm. than they do build things. So I guess I was, I was still interested in uh, computers, which of course were brand new then. And I, I actually did some uh, writing computer programs for the uh, the University of Michigan computer. They had they had one of the the early vacuum tube computers. Uh -huh. And anyway, so um, maybe that's even what prompted my question. Uh, now that I think about it, because in the engineering world, you would have had access to computers such as they were at that point. Yes. Um, going switching into the arts and sciences and mathematics was a step away from this hands-on experience, but it may not have been. Well, it's the just arts my and science there was there was a actually an arts and science program. Uh, it was a one year 
it was a, sorry, one hour a week no. program, a week program for uh, learning how to program. And uh, so I, I took that. So uh -huh. there was some, there was something there too. I was still interested in computers. Yes. I had a summer job too Please. at um, Cornell Aeronautical, uh, whatever, which was, uh, um, it, it, this this was a uh, research institute that that built stuff, and uh, the thing they were built actually, um, they had a computer there, Bendix G15 computer, mm. which was a vacuum tube computer the size of a refrigerator, mm. and they were there. Was, the assignment I was part of mm. was to um, help fighter jets land on aircraft carriers. Uh, this was, you know, in the 60s. So yeah, yeah. That, that, and uh, so what, it was very primitive thing. What, what the computer was to sense where the airplane was and then sent uh, a, sent uh, something to the pilot saying go left go right or mm -hmm. some, something like that so it was a very primitive kind of thing but anyway I was involved in that and did some programming and you know at the time it's easy looking back um, to wonder did computers seem to be a wave of the future that you might want to be involved in, or was it just something incidental to another another route? Oh, it was pretty clear computers were important, and and there, I I got uh, I got pretty interested in them, and and even this Bendix G15, which I have to say had four hundred vacuum tubes, and they were always burning out. Uh. So I had to take an oscilloscope and find out which tube was shot and replace it. Right. <laughs> But it's not clearly discouraging you. It's it's no. It's encouraging. This you. was a primitive, a relatively primitive. They, IBM came out with better stuff. Pretty, right. Pretty soon. So we we've got you into mathematics. Yes. So I was now then majoring in mathematics. That's true. A particular direction. And uh, so I uh, yeah I, um, yeah I was taking good algebra courses and calculus and this and that. So. Um, and I was still interested in computers, so mm -hmm. I can't say exactly um, where I was going to go. Mm -hmm. But um, I did want to do graduate work. You knew that already. Yes. And, um, and I decided then to, to look for, to do it in mathematics. And... Um, uh, you were looking around for where to do graduate work. I'm going to just assume you did well as an undergraduate so yes. that you could consider a number of yes, options. Yes, that, that, that's true. Um, so where where are you deciding to go? Well, um, I, I, well, I went to Harvard, finally decided. I guess MIT was the possibility. And I, I could have stayed on at Michigan. Right. But I, I, for some reason, Harvard seemed to have the most interesting impressions. So, um, yes, I applied for um, to get a degree, uh, a graduate degree in, in mathematics at Harvard, and, and I was accepted. Was the department oriented in a particular direction, or was it fairly well, wide certainly in not, its interest? Certainly not computation. No, I understand that. <laughs> but even within mathematics... Um, well, we had experts in um, in group theory and ring theory and um, calculus and so on and uh, so no I don't I can't say there's any particular area but except not especially computation right however however <laughs> however I took a course um, guy was interested in in computers. And so I took a course from a professor, Hao Wong, but he wasn't in the math department. Oh. He was in this, this other department, which was related to engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
but the, but the course was still um, theoretical. It was a theoretical course, but mm -hmm. computation came in. Right. And uh, so I I got interested in that, and it was it was partly in in th uh, mathematical logic, which is particularly intriguing. So um, I decided decided I wanted to work with him, and that, the math department said that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So that it was not a complicated choice in terms of, of yeah, procedure. I didn't. Yeah, it was okay. They were nice, They were generous that okay. way. So he he was a mathematician too. So. So was he in the end your supervisor of dissertation? Yes. Supervisor? Yes, he was. He was my PhD supervisor. Oh. Um, how do you go about deciding on what that subject is going to be? Um, well. <laughs> So it was. I was certainly intrigued by the mathematical logic, and there was also a computational part involved of trying to to can. In fact, uh, Wong. Um, this is very early on. He worked for IBM mm. for a while, and he he wrote a paper um, programming a, a computer that would uh, decide or, or come up with formal proofs of propositional uh, formulas. Right. And uh, this seems pretty trivial now, but uh, it, it was kind of an AI thing, because uh, oh. meanwhile, other AI people, Carnegie Mellon, were trying to, to do the same thing. And they, they were trying to use artificial intelligence to come up with the proofs. Right. But, Wong was a mathematician, and he just beat them all to hell. <laughs> I mean, his his program was much better than than all the others. So, is he coming to this bright young man and saying to you, "This is what I would propose for your dissertation"? Um, well, uh, I, I'm not sure it was a, he put it that way, but mm. I became interested okay. in uh, in the the idea of trying to get computers to prove theorems. It wasn't just simple propositional calculus, but okay. real mathematical theorems. So that was my that was my interest. So that was the broad, if you will, problem, how yeah. to relate mathematics to computer. I mean, how, yeah. how, how did you put the problem that you Well, yeah, it's certainly, it is, is, is mathematics, because you yes. have to come up with an algorithm and prove that the algorithm works right. and that it's efficient right. and so on. Right. Yeah, so it's certainly mathematical. So, so my uh, uh, the thesis was um, actually was pretty, pretty simple sounding. It's um, computational problems of just multiplication, how to get a Turing machine, which is the, yes. the the mathematical thing, and how much time it takes for um, a <coughs> to to come up with a theorem. Well, just to do multiplication, for example. So I I had results and anti results and things. But this is clearly related to your future work because uh -huh. this whole question of how complex, how much time will it take, is at the core of what your later discoveries will be. Yes, that, that's true. How difficult is is it to solve certain kinds of mathematical exactly. problems? And that was it. So yes. it shows up as early as your dissertation. Yes, yes, I think that's right. Uh, again, it's a pattern in academia, whatever the field, to then try to publish after the dissertation is done, some, some uh, article that summarizes his conclusions did you do that well i i, I my um let's see well my thesis was i guess published and made publishing but uh pretty much as written uh, um, you didn't do a lot yeah of well work. that was part of it um but i was also interested in other computational problems excuse me just yes, of course. <laughs> so um Clearly, I've got to get you with your degree. Mm -hmm. I've got to get you launched on your next stage. So, how, how where do we, where do you go? So, um, as a result, yeah, of I, I, I applied uh, 
for a, a job at, at University of California, Berkeley. Right. And why did I do that? Um, uh, in other places too, this, this seemed appealing. Um, I had heard that uh, it's a good place to find a wife. Yeah. Which is which is what happened. <laughs> it's what happened. Which is what happened. Um, so you were right in that. Were you also right in your choice of a department? Um, yes. So it was since my degree was in mathematics. mathematics. The yeah. natural thing was to apply to the mathematics department. Now, which probably was a mistake, mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. well, there was a just the very brand new budding of a computer science department really wasn't on its feet. So, but I, I had a strange position. It was 50% in mathematics and 50% in um, s something to do with computation, mm. computers, but it was engineering, not it, it wasn't connected to and that the, was the formal offer to you to this shared... yeah i guess that was the offer oh. half and half oh and uh so they so... knew more than you knew maybe <laughs> about your future yeah. in any case that did that benefit you i mean was that well um it i it was good to get a job yes always. <laughs> and i taught courses in in mathematics and uh so that was fine, and uh, and logic. <laughs> mm -hmm. And logic. Um, Do you have the stimulation of colleagues that are important to you, or not? Well, um, that, yeah, that's interesting. Um, the, the 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 math department did have a good logic group, but not not really computation. Mm -hmm. There wasn't there wasn't that there, but there were. Um, these budding uh, put, uh, computer science departments, so I had some interaction. You did? Yeah, with, with them, too. I've also been interested, because of the many people I've interviewed, with what culture existed uh, broadly between Berkeley and Stanford in terms of those interested in computational issues. Were, were you feeling any of that? Oh, you mean that yeah, Stanford was also somewhat interested. I think I think the um, though somehow the computer science department was just just starting, uh -huh. and the math department wasn't um, very interested. So and by, uh, yeah, so so when there the, wasn't really a broader community that you could join across the Bay Area, so to speak. Oh, I guess. Um, no, uh, maybe I maybe there's a way of doing it, but mm, no, but it didn't. It wasn't anyway, important. it didn't work. Right, right. And uh, so the the upshot was after what whatever the two or three years the the um, math department denied me tenure, <laughs> which is famously considered one of its big mistakes. But I guess it took some time for them to realize that. Yes, was, the math department wasn't interested in computation. Right. I think that, that was the problem. Right. And it was clear where you were going in your thinking. <laughs> yes, that's right. I, I, had, I had written some papers comp that had to do actually with the things later I was interested in polynomial time problems right. and non-deterministic polynomial time right. problems. I didn't actually publish that paper, but it, it generated some interest. Right. Uh, that the two, the two things were quite interested. Can you, does non-deterministic polynomial time um, can be solved in deterministic polynomial time? I, I right. was quite intrigued by that. Right. And I was trying very hard to prove the answer is no. Of course, that would have proved P not equal NP, but that was before. <laughs> right, right. But what's, of course, interesting as one looks outside into your career, so what looks like, if not a disaster, a setback uh, in not having been given tenure uh, leads you to search for another position. And of course, we'll talk about that. But it's just a year later that you you write your seminal paper. I mean, it's <laughs> yes. quite amazing to be denied tenure yes. and to be established intellectually in such a profound way. But 
take me through those. Well, there's those, some, those. yeah, I don't know, I, at least at the time I didn't know all the issues here. The math department wasn't especially interested. The computer science department, there were people there interested. Um, and they, but I, I've learned this later. Mm. Um, I, they didn't want they they didn't want to offer me a position uh, when my uh, time was up. Actually, um, I guess I could have stayed one year longer, mm. but I, I decided not to. But anyway, since I didn't get that guarantee from the computer science department, right. and I, I was told later on. It, it was really the dean, <laughs> not, yeah, not the faculty. This. It was the dean. He said, I'm not going to let you hire somebody that was denied tenure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I completely under, believe that because <laughs> sure. academia often operates this way. Yeah. So that being said, uh, you're denied tenure. This other option is not a real one, as uh -huh. it turns out. You've actually gotten your wife. Yes. So uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, so that 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 uh, goal was met as well. So now you've got to leave. Yes. Where are you going to go? Yes. Well, applied. Um, I I guess things Harvard. I guess and um, Princeton, uh, uh, among other things. I guess there was University of Washington. Right. What about and, Carnegie Mellon? Were you? Yeah. Uh, and was Carnegie Mellon one of the places you might have won? Oh, not particularly. I don't remember applying to my uh, well Carnegie then you Mellon. You probably didn't. Okay. But that would probably would have been a good one. I, I yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a was a very ripe moment there. But anyway, there it is. So you're applying. I'm applying places now. Of course, I wound up at the University of Toronto. Now, right. how did that happen? Um, I wasn't thinking of that, but um, one of the faculty members at Berkeley in computer science had just left the University of Toronto. Really? Um, that's right. Well, he thought, <laughs> I guess he thought it was a better place to go. I don't know. Uh -huh. Because the, the, the U of T um, computer science was just starting. Just I mean, it starting. was then hardly existed. Does that seem like an opportunity for this young man that we're talking about, or does that seem like a, a problem? Well, why did he move? You're, you're... Why did he move there? Is it a problem that they're just getting started, uh, and you would have ideally wanted a more established? That's department? a good question. Um, why did he want to move? Yes, um, I, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. I'm That's... not sure what the answer was, but. Uh, but there, there was something attractive about it anyway. And it was a tenured position? It was a tenured position, well, yeah. That's pretty attractive. <laughs> that, that's right. So, yeah, he's, um, anyway, but he, uh, I got to know him and he, he uh, was impressed by me. Yeah. So he found the chair of the U of T department and said, you got to interview this guy. Okay, so that's, good. that's how that that's happened. That's how it happened. Well, yeah. So off you go from California to the snowy north, um, and the, they're offering you tenure. Are they? Do they have expectations of what you were uh, working? Um, yeah. So what was that? I, I I think I can't quite remember. I think that it, it, it was um, almost guaranteed, but maybe not yeah, quite, or something like that. Anyway, it didn't didn't seem to be a. Uh, it wasn't. The, they really wanted me there. But so. what did they expect for you to be working on? Oh, um, I guess whatever the computation theory of computation. I, I think that's because I had done some work in the area. Right. And uh, so, yeah, and. Uh, I mean, your groundbreaking work is just about to happen. That's what so intrigues me about this broader yes. academic dilemma and choices and so forth. Um, but it, as you say, it, it hadn't happened yet. It hadn't happened yet. That, that's right. But I guess I made a good impression <laughs> on them. Yeah. And, uh, and their decision wound up working very well for them. So uh, <laughs> it's, a happy, it's a happy ending. But... Let's let's get to that groundbreaking work. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, so, oh. Okay. So that that's right. So what what what's the timing? Uh, uh, this is seventy that that you're um, two you thousand denied. Yeah. Uh, Nineteen seventy, you're denied. Nineteen seventy one is when your paper is published. Okay. So I I guess in uh, it was September. Let's see. Yeah. Um, this is September 1970 then? Yeah, that would be the logical. Yeah, I think it was September 1970 that I started. And that's right. So then I, um, I was interested in theory again in um, computational complexity and difficulty proving theorems and, right. and, and things like that. And so I... I submitted the paper to Stock. <laughs> the uh, it was was it the third Stock co conference? I, huh. I think symposium on theory of computing. Right. And uh, so I I had some some theorems there. And this this is because very early in the Stock uh, Stock now is very very hard to get published. <laughs> right. By the way, it wasn't so hard then. Yeah, but uh, maybe in terms of your status in the field was not yet established. But yes. the work was compelling. Well, uh, what I submitted, of course, wasn't P and NP completeness. That's the funny thing. Right. That's the strange thing. Okay. Uh, it was something about theorem proving in there, and uh, that's what I was interested in. But there was no, not, not such an interesting subject is NP right. completeness. So I had that idea after I submitted my paper. Okay. And they accepted it. Right. Such as it was. Yeah. And then I got the idea of NP completeness. And uh, I'm going to so, <laughs> ask a romantic question, which is that was there a eureka moment? Was there what? A eureka moment? Yeah, I suppose, yes. <laughs> I, would, I was certainly interested in the the question of right. um, what we would now call P versus NP. And I was trying to, I spent a lot of time trying to prove that, um, the, the, you know, the problem, given a propositional formula, is it valid? Right. And, uh, and that turns out to be NP complete. But um, I didn't believe it could be done in polynomial time, so I spent a lot of work trying to prove that unsuccessfully. Uh -huh. Still unsuccessful, yeah. by the way. <laughs> and so I was interested in that issue. But then the idea of completeness I, I got and gave some examples in, yes. in the paper besides, um, be, besides this issue <coughs> and uh, of... Uh, the, that this question, this NP problem, is it satisfiable? I guess that would be, is given the proposition of formula, is it satisfiable? Right. And, uh, and then prove that if that could be done poly time, lots of other things could be done poly time. In fact, all the NP problems. Right, that's could the be core done. insight. Yeah. yeah. That was the whole point. The, right. the, I got that idea there. And, and, and then, and what I actually turned the pa the the final version in, I put that in. Uh, it wasn't there. That's, <laughs> that's that's really quite extraordinary. Yes. <laughs> um, and the response was immediate and quite celebratory. Yeah, it, yeah, that's right. People were impressed. That that's true. Dick Dick Carp was, of course, especially impressed. Right. And, and right. I think he's one of the ones who later regretted. Uh, for, for the mathematics department, oh, Berkeley yes. not having uh, held on to you. Well, he was he was supportive at the time uh, um, when I when I was left, but he he couldn't convince them. No, of course, of yeah, course, of yeah. Course. But he he sort of got you, if you will. Yeah, he got me. That, others... That's true. But I mean, even before, while I was still in Berkeley, he he was on my side. Yes, he, yes. Well, that's yeah. important to know. Um, okay, where do you go from here? You're pretty young to have hit the <laughs> jackpot. Uh, it, oh. Well, that I guess um, made me. Uh, that's what made me famous. So. Yes. Oh, I was, so I was still interested in in that question and and, and in general the 
um, computational complexity of problems. That's my and and logic. Well, that that's my two areas of interest. Right. To this day, essentially, I mean. I mean, uh, I don't. Oh, uh, I guess nothing is quite as famous <laughs> as that. Um, the, so I have to think. Yeah, I had quite a few papers out. I, I, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say offhand what was, was especially good. But sure, sure, sure. Fair anyway, enough. there were there uh, there was certainly interest in the area, and I had students who were bright. Uh, I was going to ask first about your colleagues and then your students. Yeah. What about your colleagues? Well, uh, as um, you came my to my close colleague. Um, um, w w was um, what's his <laughs> uh, Alan? Uh, what's his name? Anyway, that's awful. Wow, it's not awful. Um, but uh, but you you found a colleague to oh yes, to work he was with. a very close close colleague, and uh, we we had had a couple of things together. But he he was also. Very encouraging. Borden is his name. Alan uh, Borden. It was going to come. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no problem. So, um, again, a, a general question with, within your, your, your pattern of inquiry. Um, would you, or is it this even useful way to put it, more of an isolated thinker who thought within the parameters of your own study or were well, you I somebody think, who used discourse as a way of well i had students first of all and okay, some bright students, students and i work with them and okay. some of them were very bright and we um generated some some good good work and good uh, good theses and of course at, we i work as i said i did work we had a couple of papers with Ellen Borden. And then I had the student, Tony Ann Patasi. Um, and, uh, and she was a very interesting person. And we collaborated on, on, on work. And she, um, so she got her PhD and, and wrote so, some interesting stuff and went off to other universities, and eventually uh, she came back to us. Gosh. So she was a very valuable colleague right. for much for, of my career. For years. Yeah. Um, now, again, as a broad question, how interested are you at this point in the practical implications of any of your ideas? I mean, are you thinking of yourself as a theorist with no interest in how this will play out in the uh, developing computer world. Um, what is your intellectual personality on this question? Oh, well, cer certainly the NP completeness question uh, could have, um, if it turned out P equals NP, could have amazing um, results. And I'm uh, uh -huh. certainly interested in that. Yes, I mean, that's the whole point. The, the questions involved are important and they have um, they they will Real have repercussions. <laughs> yeah, they're going to change things. Sure. Well, give me an idea of some of the implications as they played out and whether you were actively part of that process or not. Well, of course, the most most obvious is is to prove you can prove theorems um, a much more if. if uh, if if they have a short proof, right. the theorem has a short proof, and many of them do polynomial time. Right. Um, then you can find it, right. and that would be amazing. I mean, in in general. Right. Uh, so that anyway, despite all efforts of myself and everyone else, nobody's been yeah. able to to. To prove or disprove, and by the way, I get inundated with people who think they've solved. And you also know the uh, the million dollar prize mm -hmm. um, given to uh, the, this is one of the, the, the those problems that uh, <clears throat> I guess there were ten mathematical problems. This is one of them, and they offer a million dollars for for each one. 
So the upshot of that is people constantly send me their proofs or disproofs. Really? This <laughs> well, it's tapering off, but, yeah, no, but, but it's amazing how many career. people think they can solve it right. one way or the other. <laughs> Both. Right. I suppose that's good in a, in a way. Well, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it, it, that's the reason, of course, they were so anxious right, to the think money. they do it, just because of the million dollars. Right. But Why do you stay in Toronto? I mean, not that there's a bad, bad reason, a good reason to leave, but it's a lifetime position. It turns out. I mean, yes, that, you're that, here. that's true. What is? Well, Toronto's a nice city. One one yeah. of the attractive things about Toronto, right from the start, which the um, uh, the the chair knew about, because it was sailing, and that's how I left. That's how I met. My wife Linda at Berkeley. Berkeley. She she was um, a the secretary of the um, undergraduate. Well, it was it was the student sailing club at Berkeley. Oh. And so they had uh, they owned a bunch of boats and they gave sailing lessons. Oh. And by the way, I I didn't know how to sail, but I was interested. In yeah, it. yeah. I I joined the club. They let a faculty member join. Uh, Joined the student club. That's how you met each other. And that's how I met Linda. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. she was uh, the secretary. And uh, so I learned to sail. Right, and there's a bit of water around Toronto. And well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> there, there certainly is. There's Lake Ontario. Yes. yes. <laughs> and of course, so uh, um, yeah, we both, Linda and I, bought a boat and we sailed. Did a lot of sailing together, so we were both interested. So and the city, the city had its appeal. Are you being courted elsewhere? Are there groups of people dealing with problems that continue to interest you elsewhere? Are you talking about now? Uh, why in, math, in, in mathematics in, 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 in or math in computational theory? Um, you mean the people tried to pry me away? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, there was a movement by. Um, Chapel Hill. Um, what? What? Uh, Chapel Hill. What's the uh, North Carolina? The University of North Carolina. Though. Yeah. Uh, not, or, or, or Duke. Not Duke. 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 Duke thank you. <laughs> which is in Chapel Hill, but yes. nearby. No, it's Duke. Actually, my younger brother is a professor there. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. But anyway, yeah. nothing persuaded you to leave. That's it, right. That's right. They, um, yeah, we were quite set here in Toronto. Well, sailing was one thing. It's a nice city. Uh, there's nice uh, music. Yes, uh, we're we're good supporters of the Opera Atelier, for example. And so I'm getting the cultural reasons, and I'm uh -huh. fishing for something I probably is it is it relevant, which is how the intellectual problems uh, are emerging here, whether Toronto is emerging as a significant center for discussions in computational theory, AI, various things that... Well, that's true. Because this is you're here during a significant growth period. Yes. Not only in the field in general, but here. Well, that's true. I mean, that, that's true. Our department grew not, not just theory of computation, yes, and certainly AI, artificial intelligence, right. is, is a major part. So yes, we, our, our department grew to be a very strong department. Yes, it's nice to be in such, such a group, right. of course. That, Are uh, you attracting, again, this is just the process of um, academic um, career building. Are you attracting students that interest you? you you've just mentioned a few. Um, oh, uh, well, not now, probably. I don't know. No, no, but through <laughs> most of your career here. Um, you mean, did I, did I attract... St um, because of the problems you, that interested you? I, yeah, I don't... I, oh, yeah, probably to some extent, mm -hmm. sure. We, we got some students that way. You don't sound like an empire builder. <laughs> no, not an empire builder. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I've had, I've had a, 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 what is it, thirty-five PhD students that, yeah, um, 
that were co-supervised, by the way, some of them. So it wasn't, I don't get credit for them all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think people came that were interested in, in working with me. Right, because- And we got is, bright people, yes. Yes, and then one of the central issues, the, the complexity that needs to be, and continues to need to be addressed. Yes. So uh, Toronto becomes, I think, a very important center in great part because you're here. That being said, toward, uh, I know you retired not so long ago, really, but um, while you were there and maybe continuously, are there, problems, issues, questions that are interesting you and that you're, you might even send another generation looking um, for? I, well, uh, there are such problems that I think at, at my age now, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling my age right. and my uh, inability to remember stuff in the boy that's a, that's a, that's makes it makes things difficult right. so um it's not i i do think about problems but, but actually the mo right now the most interesting yes. problem Please. is one that my son james the younger son mm -hmm. james uh well he, he he proved a theorem that actually is is Really? Very interesting. Yes, he, he got his undergrad work at Toronto and his PhD at Berkeley mm -hmm. in uh, computer science. And then he went to work for Google. Oh. But um, I guess he got tired of Google. So, and I th somehow he's well off. Uh, and so he, he just recently resigned. But he's, th he's doing mathematics now and he's prove this interesting theorem, uh, which... I probably wouldn't understand, but broadly in what I'm context? not sure I understand oh, it completely, but it, it's very intriguing stuff. And um, <clears throat> so, and then he teamed up with uh, a grad student who was happened to be a student of Tony Patassi. Uh -huh. And they they worked on this together, and they by the way have submitted it to Stock. Really, <laughs> and uh, just recently got an email from Tony, who was in Europe and was talking to people, and she uh, mentioned she talked to somebody about this result, this this theorem, and the guy said, "Oh yeah, I saw that. That's really really good," and. Uh, we, so we suspect he was on the committee, and there's a chance there, fairly good chance they'll accept. The... I think that's a very satisfying way to end yes. our discussion with your son, <laughs> in a way, in the same the same path. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess it's beginning to look that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes.